Hi again, everyone. Welcome again to our soybean shop talk series. We are on the Feldposh farm in Fowler, Michigan. Welcome uh, to PJ Feldposh. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about precision planting and uh, soybean management. I understand the farm has a rather um, unique uh, first or uh, a very few in the country mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, drill with a lot of precision downforce and uh, Control. drives, controlled drives. Yeah. So uh, we, were, we were discussing this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when we think of drill planting, lots of folks think it's a controlled, uh, we've always said it's a controlled spill, right? Yeah. So it doesn't, in my mind, it doesn't uh, align with uh, all of the things that I know to be with precision, with you know a seed exactly placed exactly where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So PJ, tell us, tell us about this piece of equipment. Tell us, right. tell us about what you're doing here and what the operation does with precision. Yes. So um, we are still a slight controlled spill. Okay. So um, we are controlling how we're driving it and the speed we're turning our meter rolls, but we have not changed anything with the meter rolls or the blockage monitors on how we're reading them. Um, so we still have the same blockage monitors. We still have um, the same meter rolls inside of there that are putting out the seed. Okay. Um, and we're getting them to the row with the CCS blower still. But uh, once we get there, that's where we've started to change a little more things. Okay. So we're controlling um, those meter rolls with the hydraulic motor, like I was saying, so I can, as I speed up, that motor automatically adjusts. Um, similar like a ground drive, a tire is going to spin faster as you go faster. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also change it on the fly to do a variable rate seating. Okay. So now, and similar to like our planter, where we want to plant um, different populations of corn or soybeans if you're planting them, yep. um, I can now do that with the air seeder. Um, we also have a scales on, on there that's weighing what's inside of that tank all the time. Okay. So I can be very accurate of how much seed I'm putting out. Good. And then from there, that's pretty much all for our control of the seed. Okay. Um, we're looking at, looking at on the blockage monitors, um, we found a different way to look at the sensors on how they're sending them through there. They're just regular um, John Deere blockage monitors. Okay. But we're able to dial in the, um, the sensor and the voltage it's reading every time a bean passes through there, we can be much more accurate with them now. Okay. So we can get a better population off of that also. Great. Um, it's not perfect yet. Um, we're still working on that, how to count, you know, 160,000 seeds um, yeah. through blowing through at however fast, you know, it could be up to 50 miles an hour that CCS is blowing them out to right. the row. Right. So um, we don't have that quite all the way dialed in, but we're getting much closer. Okay. Much closer. And then, um, on the row itself, we have individual downforce control, so it's called Cedar Force. Okay. And uh, there's a load pin on every gauge wheel that's weighing how much weight is being put to the ground on every wheel. Okay. And then every cylinder can react by itself. So one row can be putting down 400 pounds um, because it's driving where the sprayer drove or yep. where the tillage tractor drove or right behind my tractor, and the rows a row right next to it could be only putting down 100 pounds. Okay. I tell it its target to yep. reach. So yep. let's say I want it to be at 100 pounds. I want there to be 100 pounds on every one of my wheels. It'll apply or take off based on what it needs, based on what it's reading off of that scales. All on the fly, five times a second on every row. Wow. Yes, so very, very fast and very accurate. Um, somebody drives across the field in a uh, skid loader uh -huh. and uh, picking rocks before I get there after the tillage is done, I can see it right on my map, right uh, where the skid loader drove wow. on it after every row goes over it, so. Amazing. Yep, that's, yep. It's, that's great. Yes, yes it is. And uh, what we've seen from that is now we're able to reach a, um, a consistent depth with our soybeans. So um, I dig down and I want to be at an inch and a half or yeah. an inch and three quarters yeah. or inch and a quarter to be in moisture mm -hmm. and um, my loose dirt. And um, now I can be there all the time going across to every row. So it, uh, it's made things much more accurate than just having springs there and you have an idea that you're putting you know, constant pressure across your whole drill, but it's yeah. really just a spring on every row. So we know that those stretch and wear over time where a hydraulic cylinder is going to just put more pressure down to it if mm -hmm. that's what it needs. Yep. So um, a lot less wear on it, but um, yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's worked very well for me. So Great. over the last several years. Great, so that was my next question. How many years have you been operating this? 
Um, so this is my fifth season. Okay. 2021 is my fifth planting season. It's got, I've got about 800 acres on it this year already. Okay. So um, average about 7,500 to 8,000 a year on it. Wow. And um, we do a full rebuild every year, put new discs and stuff on it to okay. keep it up to par to cover all those acres. Of course, of course. And, um, but other than that, yeah, she's, uh, she's worked very well. Good. So over that five years, mm -hmm. how have things changed, right? You've been able to evaluate the system. You've mm -hmm. been able to determine maybe how it impacts population. Yes. Um, have you increased your population, decreased your population? Anything that's been the, significant management changes because of what you've seen, because of what you have seen with this uh, equipment? Yes, so a um, couple things. We're getting much better and much more even emergences mm -hmm. on our soybeans, so our tillage has changed slightly. Okay. Um, when we started growing better corn um, and our stalks were much thicker around and much healthier, yep. what we were finding is that they were staying healthier into the next season where I was coming in to drill soybeans. Sure. So now we had to manage those different, which um, makes us manage our dirt different, yep. and, um, and how we do this. Well, now that um, I have control of my downforce and I know I, I can't, I'm not just turning a dial and all right, I think I have enough. Um, it looks like they're going into the ground good. Yeah. Um, now I'm, I'm actively controlling that. We can change how we're doing our tillage to manage those corn stalks based on because I have better control of this. So we can do actually a little bit less tillage okay. um, to manage those and um, still accomplish a good, good seed bed for our soybeans. Absolutely. Great. So, and then the other thing is, is that we've actually lowered our population some um, because we are getting a much more even depth. So we're getting much more even emergence mm -hmm. and coming out. Now I'm still don't have any perfect spacing picket fence soybeans because I'm not planting them. I'm still seeding them. Sure. But um, what I found in, and we still seed seven and a half inch rows. Okay. Um, is that as long as I have, I might have a gap this wide in one row, but seven and a half inches away from that, I also have soybeans there because the likelihood of having multiple rows with multiple gaps is not likely. So um, we have to lower our population, spread them out a little wider, and I think that's a, that's a good thing. Okay, great. Yep. So why seven and a half inch rows? There's lots of row spacing yes. options. What what makes seven and a half inch rows work for this farm? So that's, um, that's full seeding is what they call it. Um, and that's what we plant wheat at alfalfa, our cover crops, sorghum, sedan grass, mm -hmm. triticale, all those things are seeded with this, with this seeder. Okay. So um, we just, we haven't updated it to 15 inch rows. Yep. Um, also the other thing is um, to help manage our weed control. Okay. So we do a pre-merge um, burn down on our soybeans and then come back with a post later on. Sure. But um, getting a full canopy up here because we have a, that limited window of sunlight and everything, so the faster we can get to full canopy, yeah. the better we can shade out that ground, get more light into our beans, and we're able to um, control those weeds that way a little better also. Okay, makes a lot of sense. So the only uh, other question, I guess, with seven and a half inch rows, do you have much challenges with white mold? Being that close together, of course, that would always be the argument to spread them out, right? Right, exactly, exactly. So um, we manage white mold very intensively. Mm -hmm. um, trying, we've tried lots of different things, um, you know, from the Cobra approach to um, approach yep. itself. Yep. And um, all of those those things, um, we use them in certain circumstances because we know our fields, which which fields are more prone to get white mold, um, what populations, what does the stand look like, all yep. of that. Um, what does our canopy down in there, what's our airflow look like. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also, our hybrid selection goes greatly into that. We select very high resistant um, white mold tolerant varieties. Good. Um, so that's, we're, we're managing that, trying to manage that all up front and then we'll come back with um, whatever uh, approach we need to Good. Okay. control it. Okay. So getting back to the precision, precision mm -hmm. planting mm -hmm. uh, or precision drilling, whichever right. one we want to go with. <laughs> um, if a farmer wanted to get more into precision equipment, right? We Within the soybean family, within all soybean farmers, there's a wide range of growers that, you know, have uh, precision type materials on yep. their planter to, to folks that are planting with a, you know, 20 year old drill. Yep. In your experience, uh, someone wants to do better. Someone wants to do better mm -hmm. in their planting methods. What would be a good first step? What, what should someone look at um, if they are not quite into the precision farming side of things yet? Um, where would be a good place to start? 
So um, I always start at the first place. So if you're not gonna, if 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 you're not someone that goes out and buys a brand new piece of equipment, and that's not what we do either. Mm -hmm. um, we buy most everything used. We buy the frame we'd like, yep. and then we add to it. Okay. So making good with what you have already is a very important thing. Yep. Make sure you have good discs on there. Make sure your gauge wheels are tight up to your disc. So when you spin your gauge wheel, the disc spins. Making sure that your seed boots are squared up and not loose to pivot up and down. So your seed depth isn't changing. So with what the depth you are trying to hit while you're planting yep. isn't changing on things that you can't control, okay. but you can control by good maintenance. Okay. Um, and then all, always you can contact us and we will help you with whatever avenue you would like to go down, whether it's just maintenance supplies or it's upgrading your planter to a hydraulic downforce. Yep. Um, there's multiple different selections of that. There's row by row, which is um, what I have on here, okay. but there's also section control. So we can make this six different sections across this cedar. Sure. Um, and then it's hydraulically controlled just for those each section. Okay. So multiple ways we could do it, but feel free to contact us here at Felpos Precision Services and awesome. we can go from there. Awesome. All right. So farmers have lots of options uh, yeah. potentially to get more involved with precision. Of course, everyone's going to ask how much do these things cost? And I'm sure there's lots of options, right? There's, there's lots of levels. Yep. Um, but I guess on average or, you know, talking as a as a precision dealer, PJ, what uh, might be some of the cost outlays for a farmer? So um, a lot of it's ground ground um, wearing parts. I mean, there's, those are going to be your every year costs. Absolutely. Um, but the other technologies on here, um, they can vary anywhere from $35 a row, like on an air seater, I'm talking per row. Okay. So there's 64 rows on this one. Yep. Um, up to $100 uh, to $500, $600 a row. Okay. Um, so a row by row option like this gets a lot closer to that six to $800 a, a row on here. Okay. Um, where the section control is more like uh, $40 a row. Okay. So um, much, large variances in there. Sure. Um, and with how far you want to take it and uh, take your control. And like we always, we, we like to start just at the first step, get a monitor in there. Let's watch what we're doing. Yep. And then we can make a decision on what do we want to improve on. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. More data, more opportunity to alter things for the future. Is that yep. kind of the process? Good. Yep. Okay. All right. So any, anything else that you can you know, recommend to a farmer or in terms of precision, it's, it's such an emerge, it's, it's always changing so fast, yes, right? I mean, every right. year there, there's a new uh, gadget, there's something else that we can add uh, to the planter, to the, to the air seeder. Yep. Um, what's, what's maybe new and different? Any, any inkling on what is the next phase? Um, a sneak peek of what you guys I'm, know? I'm hoping we can get uh, some seed eyes that can count wheat for us. Okay. Um, so we can have a decent population on, on wheat when we're trying to put out that 1.8 to 2 million seeds per acre. Sure. Um, that, would be, that would be pretty special. I, okay. I'm hoping we go down that road. Okay, fun. Very good. Yep. Well, thank you for your time, PJ. We really pre you. appreciate you sharing uh, the, the precision materials. Um, and the innovations that you're using on Feldposh Farms. Thank you, thank you very much. Once again, thank you for joining us for Soybean Shop Talk. If you or another farmer in your area has, is doing anything innovative on their farm and want to share with other farmers, please get in touch with the Michigan Soybean Office. Thank you.